Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, welcome back to my retrospective boxing series. So as usual, I received plenty of requests from some of you guys for fighters to talk about in the series. And one subscriber asked if I would talk about former WBO Super Featherweight World Champion Alex Arthur from Edinburgh, Scotland. So let's get stuck in. Now Alex Arthur was WBO Champion very briefly in 2008, however... He only had the title for a very short time and never really did anything at world level, so his time as champion was very brief, but we'll get to that later in the video. At European level, however, he had a very successful roller coaster career with some great fights and some pretty interesting ones too. So Arthur turned professional in the year 2000 and had an amazing amount of hype and promise early on. He had a string of early knockout victories against journeymen and was developing a reputation as a KO artist. He beat some pretty well-known Eastern European journeymen, such as Vladimir Borov and Darius Snarsky, the type of guys that were typically matched with British prospects and usually gave a good account of themselves. Arthur stopped those guys and beat them in far better fashion than what was typically f seen for them. Shortly after he got a shot at the British super featherweight title against Steve Conway, he destroyed Steve Conway, knocking him out in the fourth round. He made a couple of defences of the British title, knocking out Carl Greaves and the undefeated Willie Limond. And at that point in time, Arthur was gaining a huge amount of hype from the Scottish boxing media. The hype at times got so out of hand that people were literally calling him the next Ken Buchanan. So quite typically with British prospects who score a lot of early knockouts, he was causing a lot of excitement and intrigue. As a result of this, he sadly started to buy his own hype a bit, thinking his punching power and physical strength made him unbeatable. Then, in his next fight, he got a huge reality check when he was matched up against Michael Gomez from Manchester. Going into that fight, Arthur was a huge favourite to beat Gomez and... Based on the hype he'd been getting and how easily he dealt with his most recent opponents, Arthur completely dismissed and underestimated Gomez. Part of the reason for this was that Gomez had been previously stopped by Laszlo Bognar, who Alex Arthur had easily stopped in three rounds, so he didn't view Gomez as a threat. Gomez went on to win the fight, knocking Arthur out in the fifth round in an absolute war. After losing to Gomez in a huge upset, he made some big changes to his training setup and went back to the drawing board, had a few comeback wins against the likes of Eric Udamassi and Naren Nazarenzo Gaston Ruiz. In those fights, Arthur showed that he was more patient and more tactful than he had been before the Gomez fight, and he learned a lot from that fight, and it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. He, his next fight, he fought for the British and Commonwealth titles, challenged Craig Doherty, he knocked Doherty out, in the ninth round after a dominant performance to win the titles. He then got a shot at the European title against Russian veteran Boris Sinitsin. In one of Arthur's career best performances, he completely schooled Sinitsin and won the title easily. His next fight, in retrospect, would turn out to be a career-defining victory and probably the fight that most boxing fans today actually remember him for, particularly in Scotland. He took on the undefeated prospect and future Scottish boxing star Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns, of course, would go on to make history, becoming the first Scottish fighter ever to become a three-weight world champion. Arthur handily beat Ricky Burns, winning a clear and comfortable unanimous decision, giving Ricky Burns the first defeat of his career. He defended his European title a couple more times against undefeated opponents, and then became mandatory for the WBO world title. Now, the champion at the time was Juan Guzman, However, Guzman was in the process of moving up in weight and had been inactive and made it clear that he wasn't going to fight Arthur. So, while all that was going on, Arthur got a shot at the interim title against the Georgian Koba Gogoladze. He dominated Gogoladze and stopped him in the 10th round to win the title. While Arthur was in the process of being officially elevated to full champion, he made his first title defence against Steve Foster Jr. in Edinburgh. Now... If you guys haven't seen that fight, Alex Arthur vs. Steve Foster Jr., it is an absolute must-watch, one of the best fights I've ever seen on British soil. Such an underrated fight, and it was one of them fights that just went back and forth the whole way. It was one of them fights where every time it looked like one guy was in control, the other would immediately land something and take over the fight. Uh, both guys hit the canvas, both guys were hurt multiple times, 
Uh, one guy even went through the ropes. Both guys looked on verge of being stopped at times. Just a, a fantastic fight. One of the best and most underrated fights that you will ever see on British soil. Arthur won the fight by unanimous decision and successfully defended his title. His next fight, he went over to Manchester and took on Nicky Cook in what was probably the most disappointing performance of Arthur's career. He lost a 12-round unanimous decision to Nicky Cook, ending his very short reign as world champion. Nicky Cook was able to outbox and outpoint Arthur in a close fight, where he just did the more clean, effective work, and that was pretty much it for Arthur's career at world level. He did move up in weight after that fight, and he had a few wins against some journeymen, as well as a surprising points loss over eight rounds to Nigel Wright. He closed out his career with some wins at home. So how good was Alex Arthur? Was he a world-class fighter? And how would he have done in today's era, and any era besides his own? Like I said before, his time as a world champion, it was very brief, but at European level, he had a lot of success and was somewhat accomplished. He also had some very good wins which aged very well over time, like his wins over Ricky Burns and Willie Limond, who both went on to do great things for Scottish boxing. He was also in some great memorable fights like the Gomez fight and the Foster Jr. fight. In my opinion, there was one thing that always held Arthur back from reaching his full potential as a fighter, and that was the fact that he spent the majority of his career in the wrong weight class, in my personal opinion. He was a natural lightweight, and quite a big one at that, yet he spent years starving and draining himself to make super featherweight. This severely affected his punch resistance and his stamina, which is why in the Cook fight he was so lethargic and slow compared to his earlier fights. He was in denial about the weight for a long time, but right before his comeback in 2009, where he eventually did move up to lightweight, he admitted that it was a mistake, and that boxing had all been about making weight for years, and it took its toll on him mentally and physically. If you look at the super featherweight division now, where you have guys like Oscar Valdez or Shakur Stevenson, those would have been some pretty good fights for Arthur, and I think his size would have made it interesting, but I'm not sure if he would win. I think lightweight would have been a much better fit for him personally, however the top guys at lightweight now, such as Lomachenko or Lopez, would probably have too much for him, but I'd have liked to have seen it. Around about the time where he was champion, it's a real shame that we never got to see the fight against Juan Guzman, that would have been a great fight, I wouldn't necessarily make Arthur the favourite, but it would have at least been a winnable fight, particularly if he were to get the chance to take that fight in Scotland. But against any of the greats from that division, past or present, the, the likes of Marquez, Pacquiao, Barrera, Morales, I don't give Arthur much of a chance. He was high domestic level, whereas those guys were world class elite fighters. Thanks for watching, guys. I had an absolute blast watching Arthur's career in retrospect. He may not have been the best but he was certainly in some very entertaining fights. Let me know what you guys think. Stay tuned for more retrospective boxing videos. If you guys have got any suggestions for me, just leave it in the comment section and I'll think about it. So thanks for watching and God bless.